Hello everybody, Chris here. And in this video, I wanna take our projectile, which only shoots to the right right now, and make it actually aim wherever our mouse cursor happens to be pointed. And then the projectile will travel in that direction instead. So before that, let's go into project, project settings and change the window size to be, well, I'm gonna make it 14 by 880 to be a bit bigger on my screen. So that whenever we do a test play, it's more like this. Uh, you can make it whatever size you want. So now I wanna give a sprite to the shooter so that we actually have an indication of where our projectiles are really spawning from. So with the shooter, I'm going to right click on it, add a child node, and let's look for a sprite 2D node. And just add that in. For texture on the right, I'm going to do new Atlas texture. And then for the Atlas, we will select quick load from the project and choose the uh, tile map transparent packed sprite sheet. So uh, let's grab something we can use as the sprite from here. Uh, make sure it's in grid snap mode so we can easily select it. And I think I saw something that kind of looks like a wand somewhere in here. So let me see if I can find that. Ah, yeah, okay, where's this one? I guess it's really supposed to be a torch. And I'll take this sprite and rotate it by hitting E. And then let's rotate it. Uh, let's see, if we hold control down, we can do it in specific increments. So by default, we want it to face the right, which is 90 degrees. And let's make sure that the shooter position is at the tip of this. So that makes a little more sense. So I'll move the sprite to D node, W to go into move mode. And I'll move this over here so that the uh, shooter position is more to the right. So move this further to the left. Okay, and then the shooter point is right there. So I'm gonna have to move the shooter further away from the player, something like there, I guess. And we might even shrink the sprite 2D. So if I go into transform for the sprite 2D, I'll just take the scale and cut it in half and then W to move it again. Okay, there we have the shooter position. Let's move this over here. So now that it's shrunk, let's reposition it again, W to go to move mode and yeah, just kind of make sure that the shooter point is right there in front of it. And then we can move the shooter node over to the right here and down a bit. Okay, so there it kind of looks like it's in the character's hand now, right? If we hit play and run, then uh, we can still left click and it's going to be basically firing from that point. Now we want another 2D node, which is gonna serve as the anchor point for this sprite and the shooter rotating around our player. So I'm gonna add a new uh, node 2D and we'll make that the parent of the shooter. You can see the hang hand anchor and the shooter are in the same position, uh, but we actually believe we want the hand anchor to be over here and the shooter to be to the right. So I'm actually gonna move the hand anchor to the center of our player. So in transform, let's make this zero, zero. Okay, and now we need to click on the shooter and offset this. So W to move it. And by default, we want it to be like right here. Okay, so there's our hand anchor. Oh, that's not quite right. We want it in the center of our sprite. So uh, W to move that, move it up here, five pixels. And then this comes down five pixels. Uh, okay, just gonna adjust it a little more down a couple of pixels. So um, we do want it to be where the wand slash torch is kind of in the character's hand. I know this is just a lot of back and forth a little bit, um, but let's actually try rotating this now. So if we hit E to go to rotate now and we move this around, we can see kind of where the wand is going to be with respect to the mouse position. So the mouse position is gonna rotate the uh, pointer. And that also means that the shooter position right there at the tip of the wand is gonna change as well. So that'll be at least the basic idea. Um, as for controlling the rotation of the hand anchor, let's uh, right click and add a new script. So attach script. I guess for now I'll put this in the player folder as a player component. So it'll extend to node 2D. Let's create that. I'll give it the class name hand anchor. And so this will rotate the node around to face the direction of the mouse cursor. So specifically this hand anchor node, which will affect everything that's a child of it or a grandchild of it. And I think we're going to want to do this on function process. So just updating on every frame and pointing our new direction, our rotation, um, towards wherever the mouse cursor is on the screen. So let's get the cursor position, which is going to be equal to get global mouse position. And then we'll want to get the direction to, which is going to be, uh, let's see here, global position dot direction to cursor position. Uh, let's rename this direction to cursor since direction two is a function and we don't want to reuse the same variable name. Okay, so now we have the direction from our current position to the cursor position. 
Okay, so we're gonna wanna know what our default position is. So our zero degrees rotation would be facing to the right. So we're going to want to set up our default direction. So default direction is gonna be equal to vector two dot right. We can save that, you can change it if you need to in the inspector. So basically uh, we're gonna get the difference between the X, Y for the default direction and wherever the mouse cursor is. Do some math to figure out the angle and then that will become our new rotation. Okay, so I guess if you were in a math class, you'd be doing some trigonometry stuff, but uh, I'm just going to use some built-in functions and make it easy if possible. So var angle, or I guess we'll say var rotation angle is gonna be equal to, uh, let's say the default direction dot angle to point. Uh, but that would be the angle between two points. Maybe we can actually skip doing the uh, direction two. So hold on a minute. If we comment that out and we do, let's say the global position dot angle to point, and we do the cursor position. I've uh, never tried this function before, so it may or may not work, but we'll see. Um, and then we just set that to the rotation. So rotation equals the rotation angle which should be fine because this is already measured in degrees. Uh, let's hit play and see if that works. Well, okay, I guess that's all we needed there. So we hit play and as you can see, it's actually working exactly as intended there, pointing between one point and another point. So we even got to just skip the uh, directional vectors part. We don't need that actually. Okay, now I don't super like how small that is. So we might actually increase the size and then move the shooter point up here. Okay, so this bright would just be like that. The shooter comes over here to the right. Just be sure which node you're adjusting. So we do want the hand anchor to stay there in the center. And let's see what this larger shooter, is that any better? It's a bit comically large here, but uh, I think that actually works pretty good. I am going to crop these two pixels off of the torch though. I don't particularly like that part. So if I go to the sprite 2D and let's do edit region and we turn off grid snap to pixel snap, then we can just pull this up just like so, and hit close. Okay, and that's going to kind of adjust how our sprite looks because um, we're removing some of the pixels. So we rotate around and uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that works pretty okay for a wand. So now the only thing is we also need to cast the direction we're shooting to the angle direction of the hand anchor as well. So in the shooter, uh, let's add the global rotation to the projectile. So this will automatically inherit the global rotation of the hand anchor. We could also directly get the hand anchor's rotation, uh, which if we do some testing, it might make more sense in the end, but let's do global rotation equals global rotation. So the projectile's global rotation is gonna be equal to the shooter's global rotation. Let's hit play and see how that works. So I left click, and is that what we want? Uh, yeah, right. It's not the rotation of the projectile. It's the uh, direction it's actually shooting. So let's go into the shooter script. So in the projectile, we actually need that um, launch direction, don't we? So you know what? I will create a function launch. And this will take a parameter move direction, which is a vector two, and we'll convert that angle to a uh, vector, I guess. And this will take the linear velocity down here and set it equal to this times the P move direction. So we're gonna want not the linear velocity dot X, but the actual full linear velocity with X, Y to set that initial movement. And we no longer need the ready function. So this means that uh, we'll need to call the launch function whenever we set up a projectile so that we can actually make it start moving. So let's go into the shooter script and call that. So uh, we're going to do projectile.launch and we need our move direction. Okay, so to get the launch direction as a vector, we actually need to take the angle of the rotation and rotate a vector. So the one we want is that default direction that we put in the hand anchor script. But I'm actually thinking that that might make more sense in the shooter script for right now. So I'm gonna cut and paste that. Uh, let's say down there. 
Okay, and then we can take the var launch direction and we're going to say the default direction dot rotate or dot rotated by an angle, which is the global rotation. Global rotation degrees, I think. Hold on, does this take a radians or does it take a. No, it, it does take radians. Okay, so we want the global rotation, which is measured in radians. And that should give us the launch direction, uh, which can be the move direction for the projectile when it starts um, actually launching. So if we hit play now, if I've done this right and we hit play, then we can see that the projectile is going to shoot in the right direction now, which is basically what we're looking for. Uh, now, no, it can kind of shoot through the walls. That's somewhat problematic. But aside from that, we are shooting the projectile wherever our mouse cursor goes, which is um, mostly what we're looking for. So basically, when we're taking that default direction of facing the right and we're rotating it by the global rotation degrees, then we are making sure that the launch direction rotates to the same direction the cursor is pointing. And then we pass that into the launch of the projectile. So the way we have it set up now, we do have to remember that we have to call launch whenever we uh, launch a projectile or else it's just going to be stuck there in air and affected by gravity and just fall to the ground with no movement. Aside from that, setup is pretty decent, I think. Now, uh, one thing we do want to make sure is that if our pointer is uh, stuck inside of the ground, so I guess we can attach like a raycast to it and just see if it is colliding with the ground already, then we will deny it the ability to shoot. So if we, let's say, go to the shooter and we change this to a raycast 2D type. Yeah, I think that might be good. And then in the script, we'll also change this to a raycast 2D. So a raycast 2D is a 2D node that uh, can cast a ray out in a direction. Now the target position we're actually going to want is not 50 pixels down, but zero, zero. And before we actually launch a projectile, we're going to see if this shooter position is colliding with the ground or anything on layer mask one. And if so, then we're not going to shoot because basically our shooter is stuck in the wall. So inside of try shoot, we'll say if get position shootable, then we'll shoot and return true for a successful shot. Otherwise, we're going to return false. So now we need to create this function. Uh, get position shootable. I'll put it uh, above shoot because that's a private function. So generally uh, it's like public functions and then private at the bottom. So function get position shootable. This will return a Boolean. And in order to do that, uh, we need to check for collisions. So we'll say var collisions equals uh, self dot, uh, what function did we want? Force raycast update. Actually, we probably don't need to do that because I think it automatically um, does the raycasts on like a physics frame update. So we just need to get the collisions. So let's see, is colliding. Um, yeah, you know what? We can actually just use that. So let's get rid of this function. And we'll just come here and say, if not is colliding, and we're talking about the raycast there, then we'll be able to shoot. So if I hit play and we aim down here, well, we could definitely see that it's colliding there with the ground. If I left click, then try shoot, hold on. Uh, we need to reassign the shooter because it's it's changed its type. So the player input is now going to assign the shooter raycaster. Hit play. And we come down here and left click. Okay, it should not have been able to actually spawn that. So let's see what's going on. So I think what we need is to check hit from inside. So that if we're starting inside a collision shape, we already count that as a collision, which is exactly what we're doing, hit from inside. If we hit play and we come down here, left click. Okay, good. Now it's actually not allowing us to shoot, but up here, we're good. So as long as our shooter is not stuck in the wall, we can shoot, which is, uh, once again, exactly what we're looking for. And yeah, it looks like they're not um, allowed to spawn inside of there either. So cool. So that's pretty much going to cover it for making our projectile shooter rotate around and shoot in the direction of our mouse cursor. Next steps would probably be to add in some targets we can hit with our projectiles and um, make damage mechanics. So that could include enemies. It could also include destructible objects. Uh, we'll see where we get to in the next video. So until I believe it's going to be part five coming up next, 
I will see you guys in my future video content. And once again, if you need the project files, they'll be available on Ko-Fi and Patreon for download.